I've been teaching for more than what no, eight years now, which means more than eight years. Uh, in this session, the idea is that I would want you to understand about public administration. I would want you to understand about what exactly this optional of public administration is about. One of the things that we do at Laos is to conduct these workshops by which you get to know, by which you understand what exactly are you getting into once you take an optional because a lot of time people are not from the background of the optional that they want to opt and at times they may take an ill-informed choice right? because you don't know about the optional. So the endeavor here is to understand about public administration, what exactly is the syllabus of public administration, what exactly we study when we study public administration, right? Another thing that I would essentially would want is that you must be, you should be asking as many questions as possible without, with respect to any doubt, any concern that you're having, right? If there's anything that I'm explaining you're not able to understand, you can ask me what exactly, or you can ask me to explain it again. And if at all you have any concerns about the classes, about how exactly we go about things, anything with respect to UPSC, anything with respect to public administration, I'm going to help you out. Okay? Fine online students? Chalo. So let's start with public administration. The first is what exactly do we mean by public administration? What is the meaning of public administration? Anyone who knows about it, what is the meaning of public administration? Okay, so let's start like this. So we know there's something called a state, right? And there are three organs of state. What are the three organs? One is legislature, second is executive, third is judiciary. What exactly is the idea? Whenever we talk about any democracy, we require a bunch of legislators to legislate laws, to make laws. For that, we have Lok Sabha, Raj Sabha, we have state legislative assemblies. We are electing our representatives and they are making our laws. And these bunch of people will be called as legislators. And this organ will be called as legislature. But then, it is not only about making laws. It is also about implementing laws. When you have to implement laws, one can say it is a job of executing laws. Are you able to understand? When we say executing laws, we require another bunch of people who have been given the power to execute. In this respect, what we have is the second organ called executive. When we talk about executive, there are two types of executives. One is what we call as political executive. For example, what exactly is the idea of forming a government? Forming a government means that you would want to form executive. For example, Raj, Rahul Gandhi has won the election, Modi ji has won the election, but why exactly Modi ji is Prime Minister and not Rahul Gandhi? The very simple reason, they are the ones who were able to get the numbers and because they have got the numbers, they have got the right to form, to become political executive. Are you able to understand? But then think about it. Just because we have 500 some people in Lok Sabha, just because we have 250 people in Rajya Sabha, and we have our state legislative assemblies where we are electing our government, state governments. Are they enough to run this whole country? Of course not. You require bureaucracy. You require IAS officers. You require IPS officers. You require IRS officers. In fact, that is what you are studying for, right? To become a part of permanent executive. So you have political executive, but then you also require permanent executive. When you talk about permanent executive, one can argue it starts from your IES at the entry level and it goes down to even a constable. Anyone and everyone who essentially is taking directions from political executive to implement the decisions that has been taken, that essentially will be called as permanent executive. Anyone ought to understand this point. But then there is this doubt, right? Is when we talk about political executive, we call them temporary executive. When we talk about Permanent executive, as you know, we call them permanent executive. Why? Exactly. When you talk about political executive, in 2014, Modi ji has won the election. But again, he has to fight election in 2019 to ask people again, should I continue with the power? Are you giving me back the power? If people had decided, no, we do not want you, we want to give this opportunity to some other party, then he will be thrown out of power. He will no longer be political executive. 
again in 2024 next year he essentially will need to fight the election and that applies to even state governments are you able to understand that is on frequent basis on periodic basis you need to keep on getting back the mandate and that is why one can argue you are an executive you have a lot of power with respect to executive but you are only a temporary executive as you need to keep on getting mandate of the people again but then when you talk about permanent executives that is is ips when you talk about your constables police officers these are guys who are not fighting elections these are people who essentially are appearing in competitive exams they are able to clear this they are able to show the medal and then they continue on a tenure system on a career system that is till up to 60 years generally right in this regard what exactly has happened you don't have to keep on clearing this exam every five years you you do not have to justify the fact that you are worthy enough to exercise executive power and that is why these guys will be called as permanent executives and even all to understand this point is it clear that is why we have two forms of executive political and permanent executive but then there is a question the question is that why we essentially say the fact that we are a democracy in democracy what exactly is the basic feature you get to decide who exercise the power of the state you get to decide who exercises the power of legislature who has the power to make laws who exactly will form the government but then when you essentially are appearing for this upsc exam are you taking the permission of the people you are it is just an exam that you need to clear in this respect what we are saying is that on one hand we are understanding that we are a democracy we have our legislature that are elected by the people we have our political executives which are again elected by the people the permanent executive the permanent bureaucracy is not something that is elected by the people if that is the case and if we still want to make sense of democracy what becomes very important that your permanent executive will need to be subservient subordinate to political executives anyone want to understand the logic i'm trying to say more permanent executives are getting powerful that is more essentially they have unaccountable powers in their hand what will happen it will not be democracy it will be against the principle of democracy so the whole idea is the right balance anyone want to understand the point right and that is how our executive works we also have judiciary what is the purpose of judiciary purpose of judiciary is mainly twofold one justice administration and second to keep an eye on legislature and executive to put it very simply what is the idea the idea is we have given legislature to make laws let's say there is a law that gets passed that for next 100 years there won't be any election ab ye to bada ajeeb ho gaya na there is no democracy if you essentially are saying for next 100 years there will not be any election in this regard what we did we decided legislature you can create all sorts of laws but you cannot create a law which goes against a book called constitution of india are you able to understand but the thing is fine we have told you there is this book called constitution of india and you need to make laws within the limit given by constitution but then who is stopping legislature from not doing it idea is let's say they create a law and they say no we have created under the constitution the idea is you need to have someone who's monitoring them who's keeping a check on them who essentially are able to review what exactly are the laws they have created anyone not able to understand the logic right the same can be said with respect to executive what we have done is to create fundamental rights so executive comes and arrest anyone for anything in this regard your fundamental rights are getting breached in this respect who exactly will you complain to you'll go and complain to police station let's say bhai oh, police station is executive only right that means that is not fair there has to be a body which essentially keeps an eye not just on legislature but also on executive anyone want to understand and that is what we say judiciary does that is judicial review anyone want to understand this point makes sense right justice administration and judicial review these are the two main functions that judiciary is doing now come back to the first question that we had that is what do we mean by public administration what exactly is the study of public administration it is the study of executive we understand all dynamics with respect to executive any of not going to understand the point i'm trying to say see the thing is body of knowledge is one 
what happens is you try to understand different aspects of it so that you are able to get nuanced knowledge about it for example in engineering when it all got started it was only engineering then it became military engineering and civil engineering then it essentially became mechanical engineering then they thought oh, there has to be something called as electrical engineering now computer engineering now it engineering then electronic instrumentation you essentially are studying the same body of knowledge but in a different stream in a different way so that you are able to get expertise understanding of that part here we understand about executive here we understand all dynamics linked to executive anyone not able to understand this point this is what public administration is about study of public administration is about make sense fine chalo <laughs> now let's take an overview with respect to syllabus of public administration syllabus of public administration in this respect what we have is paper 1 and paper 2 there will be two papers that you need to appear for any optional same is for public administration generally for humanities what happens is your paper 1 is about what world administration world sociology thinkers of sociology thinkers of geography that is mainly with respect to the world and second paper by and large for most of the optional is about indian context so here what exactly is the idea you are going to understand theory of public administration mainly across the world western perspective comparative all the body of knowledge that has been created and then paper 2 will be a very focused understanding of indian administration anyone all can understand this point ye baat bhi clear ho gayi let's look at the syllabus the first two units essentially is about introduction to public administration and administrative thinkers what exactly is the idea in introduction you need to study about what is the meaning of public administration please come what is the meaning of public administration what is the scope of public administration what exactly study of public administration is about in this respect when you talk about humanities it's not like science that is physical science where you have only one answer it's a matter of different perspectives different opinions for example there is one school of thought that believes public administration must be understanding only executive but then think about it if you are let's say tomorrow you become an ias officer you need to implement a law is it only about implementing the letter of the law but also the spirit of the law of course the spirit you need to understand what was the context of making this law how exactly it should be applicable because the letter can actually be changed can be abused in so many ways agar if you are following current affairs for some time there was something called as it 66a that was mainly a law that was created that if someone is abusing you over social media let's say they essentially are giving you any kind of bad words or any kind of pornographic images certainly there should be a law by which it can be made into a criminal activity so as far as the letter and spirit is concerned it is clear but then what was happening with this law what was happening was whenever you were criticizing the government state government or for that matter union government or for that matter you essentially are criticizing some of the vips they used to use this law and they used to go after you matlab although the letter is being upheld but the spirit in which it was created is not being upheld in this respect what has happened it is the failure of executive to understand the spirit that means meaning of public administration cannot be limited only to understanding executive but some aspects of legislature also anyone not understand the point of trying to say idea is there are different perspectives of understanding public administration scope of public administration the branches of public administration and this is something that we should be introduction then what do we see there is something called as administrative thought administrative thinkers that is theories of public administration that we need to understand one of the good things about public administration as a field as a field of humanity is this is a very new subject something which essentially has been present for only around 150 years see the thing is public administration was previously studied under political science why for the reason political science is that field why you try to understand about the theory of state how exactly state should be what is democracy and in that context the beginning as i had explained you need to understand about what what is the role of executive when it comes to upholding democracy that used to be the overall context in which that is field of public administration was being studied even today public administration is that is many aspects of public administration is still being studied under political science but then what happened that is in the last half of 19th century you had woodrow wilson who had written the he is called as the father of public administration and he essentially said 
that study of executing laws is different from that of study of making laws it's very easy for you to make laws it's a very complex affair for you to be able to execute law the way in which it is created why because to make good laws you need to have knowledge about society you need to have knowledge about what about what is required how exactly things should happen what is constitution etc etc but to implement laws it requires many more other skills managerial skill leadership knowledge abhi ab apne exam dekho when you look at your exam you may think ki sir isme history bhi pad rahe hain hum log apne gs mein we are studying about geography we are studying about international relations we are studying about art and culture how exactly it is going to make us a good ias officer a lot of times you might be thinking that question i have a friend that is aditya who is right now serving in is an ias officer he is right now serving in punjab cadre so i asked him because now he is very senior so i asked him ki yaar ye jo padhte the iska koi logic bhi hai and he actually said the fact that ki it's when you join the service and when you understand that what happens is that there are so many decision that you make need to make and there are let's say hundreds of people that you're meeting on daily basis and everyone is trying to make cool out of you in this regard what happens is this body of knowledge essentially is more than enough for you to understand when anyone is taking you for granted are you able to understand the, the bottom trying to say and this is what woodrow wilson was trying to explain that is way back in 20th century that is end of 20th century when he said the fact that we need to understand the art of executive and we need to separate it from legislative activity and you not to understand and that is where we saw the inception of public administration but then think about it because the body of knowledge of public administration by and large gets limited to only 120 150 years is why you don't really have a lot of thinkers not a bad thing syllabus kam ho gaya right idea is what that you essentially will need to focus on very few thinkers with respect to in that as administrative thought administrative thinkers and that gets a long way in terms of understanding them better revising it better etc etc is it clear then what we have is administrative behavior this is another aspect of public administration that we will understand what happens to put a very simple example so you have a jankya dahane for example cricket follow karta thoda bahut right so a jankya dahane when he plays for any other ipl team and then when he plays for mahendra singh dhoni there is a difference so the player is the same the commitment is the same but there is change in performance are you able to understand same can be said with respect to many of the players who are not for example mohin ali Moin Ali is not doing that well for England as much as he does well for CSK. What changes? What has changed is not the person, not the technique, not the rules of cricket, but leadership. One can argue leadership is having an effect on efficiency of public administration. How efficiently an organization is functioning? Anyone want to understand the point of trying to say, right? If that is the case, what exactly happens? There are aspects like leadership, motivation. moral what exactly is making people to get satisfied what exactly drives people also become very important concept of what understanding how exactly we can bring about it administrative efficiency this topic deals with that are you able to understand then there is another aspect in public administration if you think about it organization that is for different type of things for different type of objectives there should be different types of organization for example think about it when you talk about police administration when you talk about your ias that is your administration that is civil services hierarchy and chain of command becomes very important even in military administration it is important that you know from whom you are supposed to take orders and even though you may not agree with the order you need to implement it the way in which it needs to be done are you able to understand but let's say we are talking about judges that is a case that is going on in supreme court and there are five judges who are sitting on it is it necessary there has to be an hierarchy of course not five judges can essentially have their own view with respect to a judgment with respect to the case and they will want to write their own judgment separately let's say there is a meeting that is happening in niti ayog in this regard you might be having the specialist in economy specialist in finance specialist in agriculture social services and all of them will be debating discussing about what is the right way that means while chain of command can be an effective tool when you talk about something like this that is uh, uh, police administration military administration it is a bad idea when you are trying to get into deliberative functions think tank functions that means structure of the organization becomes very important if there is no hierarchy in police administration 
then it can lead to chaos. If there is hierarchy in, in judiciary, that also will lead to chaos, that is between the judges. If there is hierarchy with respect to, that is, as I said, Niti Aayog meetings and everything, that can also lead to chaos. The idea is cracking efficient public administration requires you to have basic understanding of organization and understanding which form, which structure of organization becomes valid for what context. Anyone not to understand the point? Fine. Hello. Then accountability and control. What do we mean by accountability and control? Anyone who knows the meaning of accountability? What do we mean by accountability? Jawab dehi is something called as responsibility. Responsibility is more of a moral concept. I'm not getting into nitty gritty, so we have to get very deep into the meaning. But then accountability essentially has definite legal context. It essentially is defined. Are you able to understand? In this regard, what is the idea? Think about it. So what we have done is, we essentially have given a lot of power to permanent executives. Because as I have said, the study of public administration is the study of executive. Right? Now that we have given them a lot of power, we need to follow the orders, let's say, or whatever the decisions that they have taken. But then think about it. If I am, let's say, keeping you here, I'm not allowing you to sort of leave this place. And if a policeman is doing the same, what is the difference? If he does it, he is doing it under the authority he has. When I am doing it, it is kidnapping. As simple as that. Right? Why? Because I do not have the authority. But just because a police officer, an IAS officer, etc., etc., has authority, does that mean they can do anything? Of course not. They should be some checks and balances that should be in place ki bhaiya, these are things that you cannot do. These are things that you can do because this is the way in which it should be done. And even if you have authority, there should be protocols how you are supposed to exercise that authority. Are you able to understand the point of, let's say there is Mr. X and that person has to be arrested. But that does not mean the fact that, that Mr. X is being beaten by police, he is being dragged by police, he is being all those things which is indignified. That means those protocols will also need to be followed. In other words, for all the actions that executive is taking, there should be accountability. Right? In this regard, what can be that accountability? If you have studied a bit of polity, what we have is legislative, that is accountability of executive to legislature, accountability of executive to judiciary, accountability of executive to people, civil society, NGOs, etc. etc. Right? But then it's not only about saying the fact that you're accountable for this. It should be about, let's say you are not following for which you should be accountable. How will I be able to control you? What exactly is the mechanism by which I can control you? For example, well, I am going to hold you accountable government for all the promises that you have made in the manifesto, for all the things that you have promised. How exactly will I control you? After five years, I can throw you out of power. That's a control mechanism. Anyone not to understand this point? You have judiciary. Judiciary will say that I am going to hold you accountable for following the constitution. Let's say legislature makes a law which is against the constitution. What, ex what exactly happens? Judicial review. We will strike down that law. That means it's not just about understanding what exactly are you accountable for. It is also about if at all we need to enforce accountability, what should be the control mechanisms. This is the scope of this chapter. Any doubt? Then we have administrative law. What is administrative law? Think about it. I hope everyone would agree that people should not be beaten to an extent by which they die. If at all that happens, then the person who has beaten them should be held accountable. But then imagine a situation, there is a protest going on and that protest is getting out of control. And in this regard, what exactly has happened? You were an IPS officer, you essentially had to issue a lati charge which led to what? Let's say two people have died. In this respect, in the first example I gave you, people have died because of the physical force. In this also, by physical force, that person has died. But don't you see that, don't you think there is a difference in context? The context is different. The idea is, should it be the laws that are being made for general people should be the same the laws that we are creating for our administration? Are you able to understand? Or should it be that we are able to understand them in a different context? 
in a different perspective anyone not to understand this point and it goes both ways for example jab agar polity padha hai to polity mein you have something called as article 33 which talks about these are the people who are serving in certain services they will not be allowed the same access to fundamental rights as the general citizen is for example let's say there is a person who essentially is working in armed forces and there is an order that you need to move towards china border or pakistan border to defend us and suddenly that soldier stands up and says bhai my article 21 ka violation hai right to life ka i am being forced to get into a situation state is forcing me where i may die the idea is article 33 essentially says the fact that the fundamental rights for you can be changed are you able to understand take an example let's say there is a spy that we are sending to pakistan right pathan ko bheja let's say right idea is what that person's life is under threat in this respect what exactly can be the argument why my fundamental rights are getting violated idea is article 33 is a way in which we are able to talk about in a very remote sense about the administrative law that is laws cannot be the same when we essentially are talking about people who are working as executive what exactly are the dynamics around it to what extent it is right to what extent it is not right is something that we understand we'll understand the french system where there are separate courts only to deal with cases like this for example as i told you let's say there is two people who have died then it the case against that officer will not be tried in normal judiciary it will be tried in a special administrative court in india we don't have that system but then we have some aspects of special courts that are there jisko administrative tribunals kehte hain all those dynamics we are going to understand over here theek okay. then what we have to understand about is comparative public administration what exactly is this comparative public administration dekho the idea is we can have systems but then the same system can actually not have the same efficiency if you are changing the countries are you able to understand think about it when you go to metro wahan likha hota hai thukna mana hai 500 rupees fine agar aap if you are spitting then you have to pay a fine of 500 rupees think about is it something that needs to be said ye baat to shit is it something that you should not be urinating in open that needs to be said but then you essentially will need to understand the context where exactly are you we essentially are in india that means there, there you need to have an understanding of society of india are you able to understand this point in western countries you have special laws to protect children from abuse from their parents itself by and large that is not a problem over there why for a very simple reason in india by and large so that is social morality or attitude of the parents has been always pro children they do not ignore their children this is a problem that we are seeing lot more in western countries in other words what i'm trying to say is that laws will always have a context in the country for which it is created makes sense the same can be said about administrative systems the idea is the way in which administration and techniques of administration is going to work in different countries will change it is not going to be the same the efficiency of it abhi kya hua one of the things during the time of covid that we were trying to do was to essentially figure out ways in which we are able to help the people who are you know facing migrant distress because there were people who wanted to move out from delhi metro cities back to their home because there were daily wages and everything and one of the things that we were doing niti aayog was doing was to also understand the measures that are being taken around the world as to what can be the most effective way to do so to hum logo ne kya kiya we essentially came out ki you have to download an app you need to fill a form that form will need to be submitted and then the person essentially will give you a ticket number everything and your reservation will happen and your train se aapko bhej denge now what's the problem with this it can work in sweden it can work in us it cannot work in india you are talking about a person who essentially is potentially earning less than 100 rupees per day and you want this person to first have a mobile phone then have an internet connection then should have the capacity to fill a form in english are you able to understand the this administrative measure makes a lot of sense in a country like as i said some western countries but not so much in india are you able to understand the point i'm trying to say and that is where you essentially will need to understand about aspects of comparative public administration that is how exactly we need to understand the same parliamentary democracy that is happening in uk and what is happening in india and how exactly are they different although by and large they are following the same rules procedures the same we essentially will do with respect to french model us model etc etc and that is the scope of comparative public administration 
one of the interesting things about CPA is the fact that it also allows us to learn about administration. For example, Indian MG Narega. You know what MG Narega, right? In this respect, this model has been taken by several developing countries like Brazil, Argentina, and they have tweaked it in their own form, Bangladesh. Why? Because they are at comparable levels. You can't have the same system in USA, but in, in but in these countries who can learn from India. Anyone want to understand the point? Ab UPI essentially that was born out of necessity of that time essentially is being adopted by a number of developing countries because what what has been noticed is that UPI job Google Pay wagera, essentially has become a very simplified way in which people would want to integrate to digital payment. You kabi check se bhi ho paaya, kabi debit card, credit card se ho paaya, wo UPI se ho pa hai. That means it also allows us to understand the problems that we are facing and understand the similar problems that similar countries like India is facing and find good solutions. Right? Then development dynamics. That is, we need to understand about what is development. This is the scope of this topic. For example, how do you define development of a country? Development ho hai, how exactly will you define it? Anyone? GDP, let's say. Hmm? If GDP is growing, then one can argue development is happening. But then, let's say the GDP is 8%, 9%. But we actually see that only the rich is becoming very rich. Then, the poor is not becoming, that is empowered. You have so many people who are below poverty line. You have, you have so many people who are that is dying of hunger. Your rank is very poor in hunger index. Now that means while you can say GDP is good indicator of economic development, it does not mean it is capturing the concept of development. Makes sense? So let's say it should be per capita income. But that again gives, uh, brings us to the same problem. You may divide the money that we are creating by the population that we have. But then which person is getting how much? Are you able to understand the point? Then let's say, okay, it is not just about that. What we are going to do is to look at Human Development Index. When you are looking at Human Development Index, what exactly are the factors by and large you are looking at? Let's say we are talking about, is everyone able to get primary education? Is everyone able to access, let's say a four-wheeler, two-wheeler? Is everyone is having a cable connection, access to internet, etc, etc, right? That can be a good measure of development. But then, what about women? So let's say every family, there is a person who is working. But then when you actually see that, it's not the woman who is working. The opportunities are not the same. You may think the fact that this is something that is only happening in, that is among the poor. But think about it, Abhi, you, I mean there are some female aspirants here. The idea is that you essentially are coming here with a time, time bomb ki tada hai, ki you have two years, you have to clear the exam, right? The same is not happening for the, that is, male child of the same family. That means it is not only in one strata of society, it is across different strata of society where opportunities are different for men and women. That means there is a feminist perspective with respect to what is development. That is what we understand in development dynamics. Because as an administrator, as an IS officer, you need to understand about all these aspects. Right? I'll give you a simple example. If COVID ki vaccine hai, the government essentially has said the fact that all people over the age of 18 will be given access to vaccine. But then what will be a difference between a good and bad IS officer? A good officer will essentially think about what about the people who are above age of 60, they cannot be given the same, that is way in which vaccine should be given. We need to have a different window for them. What about women? What about people who are working? What exactly can be the most effective way in which we are able to understand demograph of different regions? For example, this is very much crowded this area, so you need to have more number of centers where vaccine can be given as compared to let's say an area like Faridabad. What is the idea? Idea is, this knowledge will essentially help you understand the right way in which maximized development can happen. Then you get to personnel administration. That is, you need, as I said, it is about understanding executive. It includes understanding permanent executive. That would require you to understand what is hierarchy, what are ranks, what is promotion, what is the way in which people, that is organizations are being run. You understand about Indian context, you understand about Western context, you understand about theories around it. Then what you have is public policy. What is public policy? That is, yeah, public means state. Public essentially means government. Public essentially means legislature. That is how exactly policies are made. How exactly policies are discussed. How it is communicated. How it is implemented. And 
how exactly you get the feedback of the policy so that you are able to make changes the demonetization exercise hui thi what exactly was happening on the first the modi ji said something on the second there were some changes then there were some changes then there were some changes and then by the last 30 35 days let's say we were essentially were having ki this is how demonetization will happen same happened with gst when it happened it was creating a lot of chaos then we started rationalizing slabs then we started creating proper systems we started understanding the problems we started creating proper interface jo wo the cs the they started understanding about how exactly that is the gst is supposed to be implemented and then what happened now we essentially are having a very stable system of course more course corrections will need to uh, need to be done but the idea is public policy is not just about making the best policy it's about having different stages first will be research second will be formulation that is discussion of strategies third will be communication and implementation fourth will be feedback and fifth can be your course correction right that is what we going to study about for different perspectives then techniques of administrative improvement what exactly are the ways in which we are able to improve administration thoda technical hai management ka topic hai ye it mainly deals with different techniques in management different ways in which organization can be said different ways in which workflow can be decided to so, kuch part mis karke kuch kuch topics hai that is where the question is then financial administration what is financial administration how exactly finances will run you need to understand about rbi you need to understand about financial policies budget making different types of budget making should budget be only about allocation of funds or should it be also about how exactly the fund has been utilized for example recently there was this criticism that was happening we created something like nirbhaya fund right it would be that this 300 crore rupees is going to be spent for creating ways in which we are able to make that is secure environment for women help lines that is petroling vehicles etc etc ab sunne mein bada acha lag raha hai ki 300 crore has been set up but then at the end of the year you see only 5 crore has been spent that means in the beginning you took all the credit but you haven't effectively done anything with respect to it anyone not to understand this point right that means that also that is what is the outcome of the budget that we have done theek hai acha let's say there is 1000 crore which has been given for construction of a bridge iska first point kya hai mujhe bridge dikhna chahiye bridge should be visible to me that means if you are not linking it with the outcome how exactly will you look at it anyone not to understand this point then not you also have our certain problems that we have in a budgetary system that also we need to understand in this budget how exactly budget should be formed what are the problems that auditors are creating cag is creating why cag is required how exactly cag functions these things cover getting covered in financial administration make sense right this brings us to paper 2 that is indian context indian context in which public administration is supposed to be understood to so, pehla to hai evolution of indian administration again the same thing with the subject of public administration is new, so new that you don't really have thinkers of indian administration jaise जनरली ऑप्शन में होते हैं इंडियन फिलोसफर्स इंडियन थिंकर्स राइट यहाँ पे है नहीं इतने बट एग्जैक्टली वी एंड अप स्टडिंग थ्री थिंग्स वॉट इंडियन एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन दैट इज मेनली योर चाणक्यास अप्रोच टू बर्ड्स अर्थशास्त्र हाउ एग्जैक्टली द वे इन विच एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन शुड वर्क सेकेंड मुगल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन शेर शाह सूरीज एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन दैट वॉट कंटिन्यूड एंड देन हाउ एग्जैक्टली देयर एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन वर्क हाउ वट एग्जैक्टली वॉज द इकता सिस्टम इफ यू हैव स्टडीड मिडिकल हिस्ट्री यू माइट बी नोइंग अबाउट सम ऑफ दीज डिटेल्स राइट then you also will need to study about what british administration what exactly was the setup that they had brought what were the things they continued of the mogul times what exactly were the new things and then as a that is although it's not a part of the syllabus but as a precaution we also cover everything that has happened after independence with respect to structuring of that is functioning of indian administration anyone want to understand this point that is the scope of understanding evolution of indian administration by and large are you able to understand then what you have is philosophical and constitutional framework of government government is executive i hope you are able to understand that is what exactly is the way in which executive should be functioning what exactly is the way in which they should be implementing the laws how exactly they should be treating the people how exactly they should be talking to the people how exactly they should be taking the input and the idea is you need to understand about the philosophical and constitutional framework that is 
what is liberty what is equality you need to understand about a preamble you need to understand about procedure established by law due process of law many other things is going to be important for your polity but more importantly there are questions that are right now being asked in prelims this year also there were number of questions mainly with respect to this part that is he what exactly is the idea of creating constitution that is to create limits on the state what exactly do we mean by procedure established by law or rather due process of law the answer was natural that is to protect natural justice in this respect this topic essentially is a way in which we are able to understand philosophical and moral underpinnings the way in which government is supposed to function make sense right good then what you have is public sector undertaking psus how psus is different from other government organization or government bodies that we have anyone private participation is there but then there could be an 100% government owned company also there is no private participation but yet it is different from others think about it so let's say there is a government hospital that is created right and then you have created something like bsnl or let's say you have created like ongc what is the difference your hospitals your is officer ka dms office your uh, mcd everything is not created for profit orientation but your ongc your hal these are created keeping in mind profit as well anyone not understand this point but then think about it the whole idea of creating that is investing people's money public matlab kya hamaye to paisa hai this is the money that government is going to invest in your psus and everything idea is it should not be only for profit there should be some aspects of development but then if you are trying to earn profit you are like a private organization but if you are trying to work for development you are like a public organization so where exactly is the difference in this regard we'll understand different types of psus we are going to understand about how exactly are they different from the private organization the issues with respect to psus what do we mean by memorandum of understanding how exactly right now we essentially are moving towards a liberalized economy jo agar economy apne pada hai to 1991 ke baad there have been number of reforms how exactly our psus have changed what exactly are the reasons like someone like ongc is doing so great abhi kisne agar ongc ka share le rakha hai bahut khush hoga right but then you essentially have air india which no one was willing to buy ideas what exactly has been the difference so these are things that we need to understand in public sector undertakings then union government and administration that is what do we mean by cabinet cabinet to pata hai na that is your council of ministers the most important ministers will form the cabinet how exactly prime ministers office functions how exactly central secretariat functions jo metro ka station ka stop hai right how exactly cabinet secretary functions anyone knows who is a cabinet secretary ko pata who is a cabinet secretary that is what is the job of cabinet secretary बैठे थे बैठे थे हाँ वॉट वॉट डू दे डील विथ यू आर राइट एब्सोल्यूटली राइट बट वट एग्जैक्टली इफ सेट वेरी सिंपली इज देर फंक्शन हाँ बोलो हाँ वॉट इज दैट एक्सरसाइज ऑफ कैबिनेट यू आर राइट बट एन वॉट थिंक अबाउट इट सो लेट से इन द कैबिनेट वी आर द कैबिनेट He is the defence minister. He is the finance minister. He is the let's say minister of farmers welfare, that is agriculture, power minister, highway minister, and we decide what let we essentially are going to give a uh, free vaccination all the people who are above the age of eighteen years. Is the responsibility we? Everyone will need to play a part in it. If vaccination will need to be procured, health ministry is involved. If that needs to be transported, railway ministry for railways, roadway ministry for road. बात समझ रहे हो इफ इट एसेंशियली विल नीड टू बी एट मिनिस्टर लेट से इन शेड्यूल्ड एरियाज जो ट्राइबल एरियाज है तो ट्राइबल मिनिस्टर विल गेट इन्वॉल्व इन दिस रिगार्ड द आइडिया इज दैट वी आर हैविंग दिस कैबिनेट मीटिंग वी आर टेकिंग डिसीजंस बट वी हैव अ कैबिनेट सेक्रेटरी हु इज कंसीडर्ड टू बी द हाईएस्ट रैंकिंग आईएएस ऑफिसर एंड हिज जॉब इज टू अंडरस्टैंड एवरीथिंग दैट इज बीइंग डिसाइडेड एंड देन ब्रेक इट डाउन इनटू व्हिच मिनिस्ट्री विल नीड टू डू व्हाट सो दैट दिस डिसीजन इज गेटिंग एग्जीक्यूटेड so let's say he is the cabinet uh, secretary he will communicate uh, minister of finance this is what this is the allocation that you need to give minister of health these are the things that needs to be done at your end and whatever confusion that you are having you will again asking to him ask to him and he essentially will have a very big office called central secretary at whose main job is to assist functioning of cabinet anyone will understand this point are you able to understand 
it is not that easy to run administration there are so many aspects and nuances that are involved make sense fine acha then you also have to understand about prime minister's office how exactly prime minister works because prime minister is the head of the cabinet he is the head of the government he essentially will need to be the person who has to coordinate among different ministries provide them leadership prime minister will be one common factor if let's say there is a mis- uh, meeting that is happening with respect to security there is meeting that is happening with respect to farmers welfare there is a meeting that is happening with respect to disaster management let's say for disaster management what would be one would feel that minister of industries may not be required but prime minister will need to be there that means that prime minister being the head of the government will need to deal with almost all the functions that other ministers are dealing are dealing with and provide them with leadership and that is why we need to understand about pmo we'll understand what is pmo but then we have to understand about evolution of pmo what was pmo during the time of nehru during the time of sardar oh, sorry hamare uh, lal bahadur shastri sahab then what was the functioning of pmo with respect to indira gandhi rajiv gandhi manmohan singh and of course now you have modi's pmo that is what we understand about understand in union government and administration then the same with respect to state government and administration you have chief secretary jo cabinet hai kyunki government is there at the state level also government essentially will need to take decision with respect to state that is the same that we study in state government plans and priorities how exactly planning is being done in india we used to have something called as planning commission then we created something called as niti ayog what we also have is district planning committees if you have studied polity you will understand about that is in district planning committee it is at the district level how plans are being made but then you are making plans how exactly it will be processed into one core plan that mechanism is something that we understand in plans and priorities then district administration since independence look a very interesting thing hai samajh lo think of 1947 so till 1947 who exactly was running india britishers they were the people who were making the laws who were the people who essentially were the executives they were the people who were the that is keeping all the powers off that is political executives as well make sense right then what you essentially are doing you are trying to bring a concept like democracy into india ab kahan pata hai humko kya democracy aaj tak nahi pata we decided why indira gandhi should become the prime minister papa the prime minister to achhi hongi hai why rajiv gandhi dynastic politics kya hai dynastic politics aur jisko parivarwad kehte hain it essentially is that we are yet to come in terms with how exactly democracy should function why is there so much pressure on arjun tendulkar why is it, i mean can we play like sachin tendulkar but we expect arjun tendulkar to be somewhere near to sachin tendulkar why because we are yet to get into what we call as democratization society should get democratized so that democracy becomes effective in this respect what we are trying to do in 1947 is to bring the concept of democracy to a country which doesn't understand it right and that is why you have caste based parties people are voting based on caste caste cannot be linked with democracy right there is what you say uh, patriarchy in the way in which people make their choices in this respect the idea was at that time that it is going to take some time for society to get democratized make sense but one of the things that we cannot afford to change is what is indian administration that is administrative structure created by britishers why because for the first time indians are going to make laws matlab hum log ek newbies hai we are going to understand how exactly election will happen how exactly we are supposed to make laws how exactly what exactly it means to work under a constitution judiciary is also be fairly new because the constitution is going to be new they are going to be experienced bunch because many of the indians were judges even during the time of britishers but then it's going to be a new experience what we have is an administrative structure created by britishers and these are bunch of people who are very smart very intelligent while it may not be easy for us to explain to a layman how democracy works but my indian civil services officers are people who understand how exactly democracy legislature parliamentary democracy works and that is why i need to continue with them otherwise it will be chaos how exactly will you 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 created whatever law you object say afghanistan you create whatever law at the graph it won't get implemented for the reason administration hai nahi jinko pata hai what exactly is the way in which the law should be implemented so what we decided what we decided was we are going to continue with the british system of administration but then frequently we are going to bring uh, that is reforms to it 
बिकॉज उनका ब्यूरोक्रेटिक सिस्टम वॉज नॉट क्रिएटेड फॉर डेवलपमेंट देयर एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव सिस्टम वॉज क्रिएटेड फॉर वॉट फॉर कंट्रोल फॉर एक्सप्लाइटेशन Now your what you are doing is that you are giving the same power in an independent India to do same bureaucracy. That means you need to promise it to the people we are going to reform it. That means there is an evolution that this bureaucracy has underwent. बहुत major नहीं रहा है. Across the world अगर आप bureaucracy से compare करोगे in democracies, India is perhaps having the most powerful IAS, IPS, IRS officers. हद power है. And that is perhaps one of the reasons why many people aspire to become. that is a part of civil service because it's so attractive right suddenly you essentially become in charge of a very big district you are playing a very big part with respect to policy making right everyone will stand up abhi dekho and they are 23 24 jo bachche hote hain and suddenly whenever they enter everyone stands up everyone claps and all why because this this any that, that what you say this is all are now getting into public services why the same does not happen for a bank view the same does not happen if you are entering into psus The difference is the fact that we still see the uh, that is remaining aspect of British legacy into Indian administration administrative system, and in detail we are going to discuss about this over there, right? Then civil services, Indian civil services, what exactly is the way in which it works? How exactly cadre system works? How exactly transfer happens, promotions happens? Then financial management, RBI. Indian financial way how exactly money is transferred from union government to state and state to district level how exactly panchayat gets their funds that is financial management then administrative reform since independence very much connected to this that is you need to understand about what but what uh, what has been the phases of reforms agar polity pada hai we created something like cvc we created recently something like lokpal we essentially created ed during the time of indira gandhi we essentially are trying to bring reforms by which we are able to keep a check on administration prevention of corruption act digitization of records then you have to study about santanam committee these are things which is important for gs as well but this is something that you need to study over here then rural development and local urban development gram sabha gram samiti zila parishad mayor system new localism the way in which the this should work that is the district democracy works or let's say local democracy works right then what you have law and order administration what is law and order administration how exactly are able to ensure proper police functioning to put it very simply right in this respect it is about of course keeping a check on the powers of police but also understanding their problems political interference criminalization of politics understanding about the reforms that are required in police why exactly there are cases that are happening that is cases against women that is rape and all why exactly they are getting under reported what are the problems what are the reforms that are required anyone want to understand this point then what you need to understand significant issues in indian administration there are few topics which are listed but basically this is the window through which they can ask anything and everything mainly that is happening in current affairs जनरली अ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस टॉपिक इज मेनली फ्रॉम करेंट अफेयर्स राइट उसमें क्या हो जाता है अगेन द सेम थिंग्स अभी फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी सेंचुअली हैव क्रिएटेड लेटरल एंट्री लेटरल एंट्री क्या है दैट इज यू सेंचुअली सी द फैक्ट दैट पीपल आर डायरेक्टली गेटिंग अपॉइंटेड एट द लेवल ऑफ जॉइंट सेक्रेटरी वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट इशूज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू पे स्केल दे समथिंग कॉल इंडियन सिविल दैट इज सिविल सर्विसेज बोर्ड दैट हैज टू बी क्रिएटेड बाई अ जजमेंट ऑफ सुप्रीम कोर्ट विच हैज नेवर बिन क्रिएटेड सो फार idea is in significant issues we'll understand all the topics that are given in the syllabus but we also understand topics beyond it anyone want to understand this point this is why in last the syllabus of public administration fine acha now that you have understood the syllabus one thing that must be something that you might have observed by now is there is an interconnection that is happening between paper 1 and paper 2 in a very deep way for example organization public sector undertaking If you are understanding about organization, but the important aspect is that you need to understand about PSUs. The same, you essentially will end up studying about PSUs. That is, what exactly is the organization organizational structures of PSU, right? What is government company? What exactly is Indian Railways? What exactly is the way in which Doordarshan works? What exactly are different forms of PSUs? Then, when you talk about accountability and control and administrative law. it is totally connected with union government and administration and state government and administration 
you need to understand about how exactly legislature are keeping a check on uh, executive the same you need to understand in indian context that is how exactly it is being done in india are you able to see the connection right then what you see so that is your development dynamics district administration since independence how exactly we are able to bring about development at the district level how exactly uh, dpc work how exactly things work it can also be seen to be connected with rural development and local urban government makes sense then what you see personnel administration that is promotion transfer etc civil services again the same thing in indian context you need to understand about it then public policy plans and priority makes sense what do you see you see that there is a very deep nexus between paper 1 and paper 2 and that's a very good thing why because better are your concepts getting in this section automatically you're preparing for paper 2 more you're preparing for paper 2 you'll actually see that your concepts of paper 1 are actually getting then then they are getting strong makes sense in this respect what is the idea if we have seen the toppers interview they often say that one of the things that you used to do in public administration is to use examples of paper 1 in paper 2 and examples of paper 2 in paper 1 how exactly it is done by understanding these interconnections it essentially is reducing the workload that you need to go through the work that you need to do in order to get let us cover your syllabus so it's not just the fact that the syllabus is short the good thing is it is it also is interconnected which further makes your life easier is it clear fine <clears throat> one of the things that you can also consider while opting optional is to understand the overlap that it has with gs because then G gs is something which is going to be common for both that is for all the people who are taking any optional general studies to padhna hi padega make sense in this regard what exactly you see that when you talk about gs1 you need to study about post independent consolidation and re reorganization within the country right that means you need to understand about how exactly history transpired after british has left us Okay, one of the funny things is that it's now for 70 75 years since we got independent, but our modern history is still 1947, right? That means there's a very important evolution that has happened in 75 years that you need to understand. That is by and large the scope of this topic. Here, what you need to understand about evolution of Indian administration, you need to study about British rule and politics and administration, union government administration, you study about Nehruvian era, Indira Gandhi's era. You study about Rajiv Gandhi's era, the coalition era of 1990s, when Mohan years, Modi's years. This is, in a way, understanding of a lot of topics which is important for post independent India. Are you able to see the link? Then, what you see, role of women and women's organization. You also you have to study about population associated issue, poverty issue, developmental issue, urbanization, etc. etc. What do you see in paper one? Chapter 8, we, as we discussed about development dynamics, in development dynamics, one of the topics you need to study about is women in development, self-help group movement. Again, you see a direct interlinkage. Are you able to see? That means more you essentially are covering topics of public administration, it is also helping you to get very strong understanding about GS1. The same, this is directly from the syllabus of UPSC. It's not that many of the topics, right? It is directly from the syllabus of UPSC. These are the topics, right? Social empowerment and communalism, these are things that you need to study in. That is GS1 mainly with respect to society. Here, what you need to understand about the salient features and value premises. For example, you need to study about secularism. If you want to understand communalism, communalism to pata hai na? That is when people essentially are fighting over religious identities, Hindu, Muslim, stuff, stuff like that. You need to understand from standpoint of secularism, then only you can understand communalism. But what is secularism? That that is state essentially is not going to discriminate among between religion. That again means there is an interconnection, regionalism, secularism, salient features, value premises, constitutionalism, and political culture. That is, you understand about caste based politics, you understand about how exactly that is in the electoral system. We see the fact that there are certain that is what you say fractures, the way in which a politics should be functioning, that is not the way in which it is functioning. You need to study about criminalization of politics and administration again. It essentially is connected to this topic. In this regard, what you see, there is a very direct interconnection between topics in GS1 and topics in public administration. 
दैट इज ऑप्शनल जी एस टू आई थिंक ये तो सबको पता ही होगा दैट एट्टी परसेंट ऑफ जी एस टू इज दैट इज इंडियन पॉलिटी गवर्नेंस एंड देन द लेस्ट ट्वेंटी परसेंट इज योर इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन दिस एट्टी परसेंट इज डायरेक्टली पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन पेपर टू नाउ अभी लगेगा कि सर आप क्या बोल रहे हो बट द फैक्ट इज द थ्रोथ इज दैट द क्वेश्चन दैट यू इसेंशली सीन पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन पेपर टू आर मच ईजियर दैन द क्वेश्चन दैट आर कमिंग इन जी एस पेपर टू एंड द टॉपिक दैट यू कवर इन पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन कीप्स यू इन बेटर फुटिंग टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड टू राइट गुड एंड इफेक्टिव आंसर्स फॉर जी एस टू फॉर द रीजन जी एस टू इज क्रिएटेड एस ए वी इसेंशली वुड वॉन्ट ऑल एस्पिरेंट्स टू हैव बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ दैट इज योर पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन मेनली विद रिस्पेक्ट टू इंडियन पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन अभी आप लोग की पॉलिटी होगी एनी वन स्टडीड पॉलिटी राइट इफ यू हैव स्टडीड जस्ट गो बैक एंड लुक एट दी लास्ट थ्री फोर ईयर्स क्वेश्चन ऑफ इंडियन एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इन एक्चुअली सी मेनी ऑफ दी क्वेश्चन आर डायरेक्टली लिंक टू वट यू स्टडी इन पॉलिटी एंड वेन यू लुक एट जी एस टू वाइल यू मे नॉट बी एबल टू आंसर इट यू विल टू लिंक इट की ठीक है बैठ के इस टॉपिक में दिस टॉपिक विद दिस क्वेश्चन दैट एज मिनास इज गेटिंग कवर्ड दैट अगेन इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग दैट इज एस्पेक्ट सो वट आर द टॉपिक्स ओवर है Indian constitutional historical end of innings evolution. This is something that you need to study in public administration, British legacy, evolution of Indian administration, constitutionalism. Then functions and responsibility in union and state. Again, the same thing that we have studied. Then separation of powers. What is separation of power? Legislature, executive, and judiciary. How exactly are they separated? Comparison of Indian constitutional scheme with other countries. As I said, French system so much they are. Log UK ka system so much they are. Understand about Canadian system. That again is going to help us over there. So by and large, what exactly we see that around eighty percent of your GS two in a very major way is getting covered. Fine. GS three, GS three is mainly economy, science and tech, disaster management, right? वहाँ पे क्या देखते हैं इंडियन इकोनॉमी इश्यूज रिलेटिंग टू प्लानिंग मोबिलाइजेशन रिसोर्सेज ग्रोथ डेवलपमेंट एम्प्लॉयमेंट गवर्नमेंट बजटिंग दीज आर द टॉपिक्स दैट आर देयर इन योर जी एस थ्री पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन में पेपर टू चैप्टर नाइन फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट बजट एज अ पोलिटिकल इंस्ट्रूमेंट गवर्नमेंट बजटिंग रोल ऑफ इन फाइनेंस मिनिस्ट्री इन मॉनिटरी एंड फिजिकल एरियाज हेयर यू सेंशियल विल नीड टू स्टडी अबाउट दैट इज फिजिकल पॉलिसीज मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी इकोनॉमी पढ़ाई होगा जी एस में राइट देन द सेम इज Plans and priority machinery of planning. Here you need to study about planning, mobilization of resources. You need to study about how exactly Niti Aayog functions. Here you need to understand about what planning commission Niti Aayog again. What are the different aspects of it? Indicative planning, decentralized planning. Again, you need to study about the same over here also. Then you have effects of liberalization on the economy, changes in industrial policy. Paper one. Chapter eight: Development dynamics, impact of liberalisation on administration in developing countries. Are you able to see the interconnection between topics in GST with public administration? Then disaster and disaster management is something you need to study in GST. You have paper two, chapter fourteen: Disaster management in significant issues of Indian administration. Again, disaster management in itself is four five pieces. That again is a part of your public administration. More you get your concepts right over here. it is going to help you in public administration more you get your concepts right over there automatically it's covering your syllabus for gs3 if at all it is going to be this way because it is going to give you a holistic understanding of what is disaster management chalo then gs4 ethics in ethics you have two parts mainly with respect to what mainly with respect to that is uh, theory part and second what we call as case studies in theory part you need to study about what you need to study about mainly values of administration understanding about attitude problems of administration what are case studies a situation is given to you you need to understand about the underlying values but you also will need to give administrative solutions solution centric over case study then only you will get marks are you able to understand but think about it for all the ways in which you would want to think solutions but if you do not have knowledge with respect to all aspects in which administration works your answer may not be very in form you may not be having number of points here what we understand we need to understand how exactly district administration works how exactly what are the functions of a district officer just from dm ya district collector kehte what exactly are this function how exactly he does prison management how exactly he conducts fair how exactly he does developmental roles how exactly elections are getting conducted all these are ways in which it becomes 
certain steps, certain solutions that you can link in your case studies. Are you able to see that? What you also have is a topic in public administration in Indian civil services and also in personal administration with respect to administrative ethics. You need to understand about integrity, probity, that is spirit of service. You need to understand about role of Indian bureaucracy with respect to development, with respect to removing poverty. Idea is so many things in your paper uh, that is public administration is directly helping in your ethics. Look at the syllabus status and problem, ethical concerns, dilemma of the government and private institution, laws, rules and regulations, concerns as the source of ethical guidance, accountability. Are you able to understand? You need to study in the, a chapter called probity, concept of public service, philosophical basis of governance probity. What is philosophical basis? What we just understood. So, a lot of time people look at GS4 as a general studies topic which is uh, you know, branching out of sociology or this or that or that or that is uh, what you say philosophy or any other topic but actually it is GS4 they are not saying it's a paper on ethics they are saying this is general studies paper 4 so a lot of times you essentially will get to write answer only when you are able to understand ethics in Indian context and there you need to understand about problems and challenges of Indian administration just go back and look at the questions of ethics are corruption in Indian administration? How do you define corruption? How do you look at it, political interference? Your case studies are about it. In public administration, that is the core aspect of understanding the issues. That is, you need to understand all the nuances with respect to it. There's a direct interconnection. You need to study about code of conduct. Of, you need to study about citizen charter, code of ethics, work culture. This is motivation, what we just studied. Here, what exactly are the topics? Development dynamics, bureaucracy and development. What is the role of bureaucracy in bringing development? Personal administration, code of conduct. You have code of conduct, code of ethics over here. You need to study about administrative ethics. Again, OBT will get covered. Integrity, all the values, fairness, beneficence, everything will get covered. Then techniques of administrative improvement. You study about e-governance. You study about information technology. Again, something which you need to study over here. Philosophical basis of constitutional framework, bureaucracy and democracy, which I just explained. Bureaucracy, democracy, heck, it's a debate where you need to understand that you have to keep a check on the powers of bureaucracy, otherwise it goes against democracy, which I have told you earlier. Right? In Pakistan, mein, it is called to be a military manned bureaucracy. Military is a stakeholder on the decisions of the state. On, in India, that is not the case. But then, we have our set of problems with respect to, that is, uh, you're going and there's a policeman who essentially, uh, you see a policeman. Is it something that inspires confidence in you and you get scared that you don't have to go bike the bike? Idea is there are problems that we are also facing. We essentially see the fact that there are so many cases with respect to women harassment that does not get reported because women essentially do not feel confident to go to a police station and report it because there is patriarchy in police as well. Are you able to understand? The idea is what? The idea is this again is something that you are studying over there directly linking to your ethics paper. Then civil services, good governance initiative, code of conduct, civil services neutrality, civil service activism, all these are topics that are going to immensely help you in GS4. So what we are able to understand, there is a direct inter overlapping with GS1, GS2, GS3, GS4, where I think I think up to here over In this regard, let's do a mathematical analysis. That is, what is the degree of overlap, and what we are doing here is to have a very reserved estimate with respect to it. That is, we essentially are going to be looking at it from standpoint of that what is the minimum degree to which it overlaps. We are not going into the extent because the right data essentially will come only when you are able to understand the questions that are getting asked and how much it is getting covered in per We essentially are looking at the reserved estimate as to what is the minimum overlap that happens. Here you see GS1 by and large 25% will get covered. GS2 80% as I just told you that 20% is your uh, international relations there also Pabat will help you I'm not counting that in GS3 you have 20% as I just explained you all in the slides GS4 again a very re uh, reserved estimate 60% very reserved estimate is 60% then in SA in SA you have to attempt two essays I can promise you because when you look at the trend of questions that they're asking in both essays your knowledge of public administration is going to help you immensely because let's say there's an essay with respect to society, with respect to this, development dynamics is going to help you. What exactly are the different ways? 
bureaucracy philosophical framework of government is going to help you historical perspective from what were the things that were done in mughal times what were the things that were done in kautilya times that again can be written that means at least one essay i'm saying at least one essay is 50% of the paper mai to usko bhi reserve karke 40% maan ke chal raha hu so ideally it should be around 60 70% 40% maan ke chal raha hu right then what you also have is optional one and optional two that is two papers of optional what will be the degree of overlap 100% right so <laughs> optional right it will be 100% we are covering that optional that means if you essentially are going with public administration as an optional when you do a study with respect to overlap overlap that it is having with gs you see 45% of gs preparation is getting done when you are taking public administration which again is a very reserved estimate you can do the calculation and if you were to include optional 1 and optional 2 which you have to appear you actually see what 63.5% of mains preparation is directly linked to what we need to study in public administration make sense okay that is the idea of making informed choices so that you have to understand not just the syllabus but an overall understanding dekho ek cheez na apne aap ko hamesha batana this is a aspect of discipline jo a lot of times student realize later in their preparation that is after the second or third attempt this is an exam which you need to clear this is not an exam where you going to get degrees right ki tumko masters in public administration phd in public administration your knowledge will be at par with someone who's doc- who's having doctorate in public administration many of my students were actually people who are having very high degrees in pubat what is the idea of this exam you need to clear this exam and that is why you need to consume knowledge in a way in which it is directly helping you to clear the exam and your 10 12 hours there's no escaping hard work in this exam also says the fact that there is a shortcut to it is lying you have to be very lucky so that you essentially able to get through a shortcut but then it is very rare that if someone is very lucky right idea is there is no shortcut to this but then if you're investing your 10 11 hours every day for your studies it should be it must be absolutely too much playing the exam and that is the way in which you should be preparing that is your exam that is overall the way in which you should go about in your preparation chalo now let's talk about some of the recent trends mainly of last few years isko 4 saal hi maan lo ab to right in this respect what exactly is the idea that questions have been very direct in nature in both paper 1 and paper 2 just take out the question paper of upsc of last 3 4 years you'll actually see that question is directly from the topics that we have just discussed right then public administration paper 2 questions have been easier than gs2 questions which i just explained it is as if they are making paper for pubat 2 and renaming it as gs2 and they are making paper for gs2 and then renaming it for public administration right then all questions of both paper 1 and paper 2 were directly from the class notes and discussion this is something that i take a lot of pride in that is what i do in my classes is to essentially go through all the topics topic by topic everything that is given in the syllabus all the examples that are required that you need to write that will also be parked that is in the topics and i mean there will be extensive notes that will be given to you in form of handwritten notes and or there will also be some handouts that i'll be giving you but then 95% of it will be proper notes that you'll be writing when you're attending the classes and i give this promise in the first class and i'm saying it again not more than one question will be beyond the syllabus of upsc that is what i have covered in the class that is at the most there can be one question that also will be from current affairs totally something that that event might have happened after the classes are completed that might be something that can be asked in the exam but at least for last four years there's not been a single question which has not been from the notes that i'm covering you that's a guarantee wo hoga hi hoga fine then what we also have we try to cover everything in five and a half months but it actually can go up to 6 months why is that the reason is i do not leave any stone unturned there are people who can cover the public administration in 70 classes 75 classes and that's the easiest way to cover public administration but as i said that's not the reason why you're coming to me you're coming to me so that i'm able to help you clear the exam are you understanding for example there's something called as teacher and there's something called as coach what is the difference pooja kabhi Rahul Dravid is the coach. So, will he be teaching Virat Kohli how to play cover drive? Of course not. So, what exactly are we holding Dravid accountable for? 
is he able to extract maximum performance out of Virat Kohli Rohit Sharma? Any baat samajh lo? That is what we are holding him accountable to. That is, you are the coach. We want you to get performance out of us. Here, what is the idea? I am going to be your teacher first. I am going to explain everything. But my focus is to get performance out of you because I very well understand, and this is our approach. That is, there is no degree that you are getting. My accountability, मेरी जो जवाब रही हो ना accountability and control. My accountability towards you is to help. Keep whatever I am teaching and whatever you are seeing the exam, you are able to see the clear nexus. And your responsibility is that you essentially should be attending all the classes, making proper notes and asking doubts whenever you have any doubts, right? Because that is you need to control, right? Then another very interesting thing, lavasana training. That is in you have to study about public administration one of the things that you need to understand is what exactly is the job of is you need to study about public administration that is that is what you seem to be training you are going to become a part of permanent executive so one thing is inevitable you have to study public administration either you study it now or you study after getting selected if at all you have to study at that time it's better you understand it right self right hello something to think about then what we have what as i said there will be complete coverage of syllabus see the thing is i believe the fact that students should be doing self study achhi baat hai i support it i help the people who are doing self study but then what's the idea of coming to a coaching institute the idea is that everything gets so organized that things that you need to figure out i am doing it on your behalf baat samajh lo na that you do not have to spend time in figuring out things that you are reading something which is not required you are reading content which is not required and that is where experience comes in you must understand i have a very bad habit of using lot of critic cricket examples but <laughs> one of the things that virendra sehwag actually said was that whenever you are batting with sachin after every ball or after every two balls sachin will come and whisper in your ear and he'll tell you what exactly is the thinking of the bowler with exactly the ball is going to sing Or exactly, will he plan to get you out? Why? Because Sachin essentially has played so much of cricket, he has so much of experience, he is able to think like the bowler, right? And that is what is helping someone as new as, let's say, Virendra Sehwag when he was very young, in terms of dealing with the bowlers. That is the idea of coaching institute as well. That is, you essentially rely on someone who can tell you based on their experience what is going to be the trend of the exam, what is going to be. the trend of the questions which exactly are the books from which they are asking questions and then prepare a capsule that can be given to you and all you need to do is just do that in this respect what you see that one way or the other questions are getting asked from these books it's not that you need to study all the chapters of all these books it's just the fact that there are some chapters of some book which is important what i do for those chapters that is for example your this book competitive public administration ramesh ki aroda This is a very important book, mainly for competitive public administration, but also questions with respect to introduction to public administration. Very important book. In this respect, what I do, I have studied this book. I make notes out of it. I essentially place the relevant part of it in the right topics, in the right units, in the right chapters. Then what you see, this public administration and public affairs, which is a book by Nicholas Henry. This is very important, mainly for public policy. Why it is important? it is a different thing it's good or bad it is important because direct questions are getting asked in public policy from this book so what exactly i do i study this book i bring it down into notes that are getting provided so that you don't have to buy and study these things are you able to understand the point i'm trying to say then the same is with respect to mean that is public policy of our sapru you have this book kangya vidyut chakravarti yes this book is essentially becoming very important because it's not giving you anything new but the idea is vidyut chakravarti Professor Vidya Chakravarti was for some time the head of public administration department, mainly with respect to changing the, that is when change of pattern of public administration was happening, and then many of the ways in which public administration questions should be asked in UPSC. He was the professor who was consulted by UPSC, and that is why his book has become important. In every year, you are seeing questions that are coming from this book itself. So I study this book. It's my job to make sure the fact that you are prepared for the exam. And so is with respect to all these books. This Mohit Bhatta Chaudhary books, so I think, sab ko pata hi hoga. This is something which all toppers are recommending because it's a good book. Because you see, direct questions that are coming from Professor Bhatta Chaudhary's book. Fine. This Prasad and Prasad is a staple. 
that is book that is people referring mainly with respect to thinkers but then it is not covering all aspects of thinkers for that you need to study some of the other books then iipa that is indian institution of public administration journals which are periodically getting released it's my job to bring it into notes so all idea is what all these aspects will be part of the notes that i want to provide you and it will be covered in the class itself so that you don't have to look beyond the notes bachcho ka rehta generally students ask me sir should i be buying new books should i be buying anything i tell them you don't have to because 95 96% of the preparation is what i'm giving the class notes itself once you essentially are able to get command over the class notes and then you have the desire to study more you come to me i'll get you the book i'll tell you the books that you need to study but if you haven't done the basic minimum you want to really you know jump into books so i don't suggest it phir bhi mango ke i'll suggest you the books not at all an issue with me right because i encourage people to study but the first core content and that is not just for pavad but even optional that you are going to go for if you have taken this investment you have make you know given this trust to the teacher to the educator then just follow the instructions pehle us notes pe command le lo and then you can do your own bit is it clear and notes are going to be exhaustive and extensive all right then answer writing practice right now a lot of times when you are starting your preparation for upsc a lot of time people essentially think that answer writing practice is required so that you are able to think what needs to be written in the exam what needs to be written in order to do justification to the question that means you actually think that you may not be able to think of content to require to write an answer and let me promise you that will never be the concerns if you are a serious aspirant that is you will always know by and large the content that is required but you don't know how to articulate it within 200 words the art of bringing down your 8 10 points into 200 words 250 words 150 words is the art of answer writing points batana is the easiest time matlab i'll keep on telling you the the content will be hoga examples will also be there data will also be there your points perspective criticism everything is there so you'll go through them two three times you have all the point and content ready but then the problem that you are going to face is how to bring it down into 200 words right there is a famous statement of uh, abraham lincoln where he had written a letter and said because of paucity of time i am writing a long letter please forgive me are you able to understand if i had some time i would have applied my mind to say the same thing in fewer words when you have not a lot of time you essentially start writing lot more than what is required idea of answer writing is to bring that discipline by which you are able to do justice to every question in a way in which within the word limit you are able to write as much as possible and that is answer writing practice right in this regard right answers you show it to me i'll keep on giving you inputs i'll keep on helping you with respect to mistakes that you are making things that can be improved upon anyone or friends on this point is it clear in this regard one thing that you need to understand is it for all the ways in which i can give you and that applies for gs at plus for all the topics for all the ways in which i can give you tips that's not going to help you why because it's like swimming until unless you don't get into water <laughs> nahi seekh sakte i can tell you the art of swimming and everything it's when you write very bad answers is when you get to a point where you write not so bad answers to a point where you write okay answers then you write great answers right and that happens to everyone who's getting selected i have a student rank 14 uh, abhinav jain this year priyansha garg rank 31 these are my students rank 50 uh, shishir gupta so they used to write very bad answers what mattered that they kept on working they kept on writing answers they kept on learning from the mistakes and they got to a point and i can again say it very confidently that will happen if you are in serious aspirant you start writing answers by which i get to learn few things why because you are engaged in constant hard work right but that is the journey that you need to take jab swimming nahi aati and then you get into water what exactly people do tube ke sath kutte like you do nahi i am your tube i am your lifeguard kudo to sahi you essentially will need to start writing answers this is something that my student had written i helped him in terms of understanding it what is the good part what is the bad part what could be the better way of structuring that cannot happen if you don't write answers that's the only thing that i'm saying you write answers i give you my word it is going to help you
also going to have are going to have our test so what we are going to do is the fact that sometime in october we are going to have eight tests that you will need to appear and six will be sectional two will be full length test what we are also going to do that is next year that is right after prelims we are going to have eight more tests that too you are going to have open access why because when your course is undergoing it is going to take some time for you to understand it revise it totally comprehend it and then bring it down into the answers that you're going to write that means it makes more sense that we are having test after prelims next year so that it is totally relevant to the year in which you're going to write means but then that should not stop us from not allowing you to write test if you want to so what exactly we are going to proceed about it there will be eight tests that you can appear from october onwards and there will be eight tests that will appear right after prelims so that essentially will give you an holistic understanding and both is will be open access to you as any you have to pay any extra anything it will be open access to you only thing is we have structured it in a way in which it becomes convenient for you it becomes more that is meaningful for you test series kyo karna hai so that you write better answers so that you are able to get more marks this list structuring becomes better at the end of the day apne aap se yahi sawal puchna hai just keep on asking this question what i'm about to do how exactly it is going to help me to increase my marks to get me clear this exam right hello then revision everything will be done answer writing practice will be done we are going to work on uh, that is learning curve acha one more interesting thing what i have that i essentially in contact with two that is professors in delhi university and one is in jeu both of them essentially are uh, that is correcting copies for public administration i am in contact with them i'm this is arrangement they are going to correct copies for people who are going to appear in this that is the test that we are going to conduct in other words what i'm trying to say is that you are going to get your copies evaluated by people who are actually correcting the copies in upsc why exactly is that the case the reason is very simple i am teaching you something you are going to understand it you are going to make this notes you are going to bring that into your answers and then when i'm again correcting it i'll give you good marks but in your upsc i'm not going to be the one who's correcting it it needs to be corrected by a person who will have his own opinion in this respect what will happen is and usme ghavrana nahi hai that they will keep on giving you something that they believe should have, should be a part of it and no one can be 100% but this experience will help you to understand how exactly things are going to be in the upsc are you able to understand the point anyone able to understand this point right abhi jaise priyansha also got around 295 in both paper one and paper two right in this regard she is not also 100% so that's good enough for her to become ias officer what matters is that at the right time she is getting the input by which she can improve her answers and for that it is necessary that this input is coming from a person who is you know apart from your faculty ki athor ab main hunga to main unse bhes thodi karunga but maan lo if i am having a boy who is working under me who's correcting the copies usko bol dunga nahi iska to ye answer hona chahiye but if it is coming from there it essentially will give you a right mirror right reflection and it's going to help you in the learning curve to get it better are you able to understand that again is something that i ensure it could be that if because if there could be more backlog of question that is test papers i'll be correcting some of the question that is papers right but by and large i'll make sure that you'll be for most of you for all of you that is you essentially will be getting it your copies most of your copies getting corrected by the as i said the two professors that i am in contact with fine <coughs> then important articles from newspaper i always say the fact that hindu is a better go to paper not because indian express any less i love reading indian express but because questions are coming from hindu because you have, we have our dns program which covers which explains everything on daily basis what has come in hindu that means if the goal is to clear the exam it should be that there should not be something which is getting left out so hindu becomes an obvious choice there will there can be some good important articles in indian express that i'll be sharing with you the groups mainly from standpoint of current affairs or public administration acha ek aur cheez generally that's a doubt ki sir in public administration there could be questions in paper too mainly that might be linked with current affairs it will be linked to core aspects of what we are covering the class but there could be some aspects of current affairs let's say lateral entry when i bol diya so lateral entry is something that we have been i have been teaching for years but because it has become a very hot topic in recent years because of many of the decision taken by the government how to go about how to make sense of it 
the way is very simple just follow your focus magazine and dns the current affairs that you need to prepare for gs is no different from the current affairs you need to prepare for public administration it is exactly the same only thing is when you're doing that is covering your focus magazine current affairs magazine you need to just highlight those topics which are linked to the topics that are there in public administration let's say you actually see a news item or let's say you essentially see one of the articles in your focus which deals with issues of planning usme mark kar do pa likh do do star laga do kuch bhi aisa kar do so that you know the fact that not just this article is important for my gs preparation i will study it let's say bit more at depth so that i am able to also use it in my public administration answers but the content is something which is that is the content that is required for your gs preparation for current affairs exactly that is required for your public administration right uske alawa i am here i am going to help you out with respect to making sense of current affairs sharing important articles with respect to this also uh, having some classes mainly to deal with current issues which are important for the year is it clear apart from of course the the test that i just spoke about we are going to conduct we are also going to have some class test in these class test it is important that you write there are two types of students you are going to have offline students who can submit it over here and i am going to correct it for online students what exactly will be the idea that you need to make it into a pdf and then you have to send it over me send it to me i am going to correct it and i'm going to send back the pdf to you a lot of time online students essentially feel that sir will it be the experience be as good as offline we try to make sure as far as possible it becomes as good as offline because we can understand the fact that there could be some genuine reasons why you cannot be offline so be it the interface that we are having it is state of the art the best camera the best coverage i think you might be seeing it right now or for that matter the way in which i am going to be in touch with you clearing all the doubts that online students are asking every 10 15 minutes at is as and when we are completing topics i keep on asking if at all there are any doubts then i'll clear it up right so as far as the experience is concerned i can that is i can assure you it's going to help you out it's not going to be that you are missing out on something ha huh? it will always be the fact that if you are an offline student you get to come to a class you essentially are able to sit you are able to let's say talk to people share notes and everything that in itself has a motivating effect but then there could be some other reasons why you're not able to understand so it's totally understandable yahan tak iski baat hai assistance one on one conversation and everything we can have a zoom calls we can have a zoom sessions doubt sessions we can also have a phone calls where you can ask your doubts concerns and i'm going to help you out fine right? i'm going to be always approachable for concerns regarding upsc preparation acha what is the idea the idea is that once you become a student that is up in so optional padlo it's not just about that you can ask questions only with respect to optional if you have concerns with respect to preparation for upsc in general about your topics about your subjects and all i'll keep on helping you out aisa kuch nahi hai that because my interest is that i want you to get selected so for that even if it means i have to go about beyond public administration with respect to strategy helping you out and all i'm going to do that right there are number of testimonials i think right now laws is uploading every day with respect to my age students with respect to selected students right you can go through it all of them will pretty much say the same thing that uh, jo mentorship hai the help that is required for you i'll be always available and approachable the second thing is a lot of time people feel that well it is only for the 6 month i'll be available to you that is after 6 month jab class ho jayegi sir kahin aur hoga aisa nahi hai the thing is many thakunga i am not going to be the person who is going to get tired right as far as you have the metal and desire to appear in this exam the courage to essentially keep on preparing coming back i am going to be available for you right many of my students abhinav jona 14th of fourth attempt priyansha third attempt uh, shishir gupta fourth attempt shreyansh who is right now in bihar bcs he was ranked one bihar bcs right so he was i think in the second attempt the idea is it cross your journey till the time you are preparing for upsc i'm going to be available and kyunki main to kahin nahi ja raha you need to have courage and metal i want you to clear the exam in the first time itself it is very much possible but i'm saying if at all things do not fall in place do not think that ki sir ka access khatam ho gaya aisa nahi hoga raus ki building kahin nahi ja rahi anubhav sir kahin nahi ja rahe we are going to be here fine theek hai now the next question next thing is you asking your doubt 
whatever doubts and concerns that you are asking that you are having please ask me any doubts we'll start with offline yes yes देखो फर्स्ट थिंग इज दैट वन ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट वी एंश्योर वन ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट आई एंश्योर इज द फैक्ट दैट वी रिज्यूम दैट यू नो नथिंग अबाउट द ऑप्शनल सो आपके साथ है दैट यू आर हैविंग अ बैकग्राउंड इन पबैट विद सम ऑफ देम इट मे नॉट बी दे आर हैविंग नो बैकग्राउंड इन पबैट इट इज माई जॉब टू मेक श्योर दैट वी आर स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम जीरो राइट सो एवरी थिंग वी स्टार्टेड फ्रॉम स्क्रैच टू अ पॉइंट विच यूर एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड For example, the way in which I covered what is the meaning of public administration. In the same way, we covered all the topics. Second thing is with respect to technicality of the language. The idea is that language generally seems technical when we don't understand the meaning of it. For example, I can say something called as bureaucratic pathology. So, नहीं मिल रहा यार ये क्या है bureaucratic pathology? What it means is that once you become a part of bureaucracy, within bureaucracy, you get accustomed to the way in which bureaucracy works. you might be a person who wants to bring a change but after few years in bureaucracy you just essentially becomes the way in which everyone works that is file ko dheere dheere karna you could be a person that you want to be honest but then you understand the fact that everyone is corrupt so i will look the other way when corruption is happening in this regard what is the idea now that you have understood the meaning of bureaucratic pathology it becomes simple it's when we are ignorant to right terms is when it becomes tough and it's not only with stuff that that appear stuff for example secular now secularism essentially is a term which may appear simple but it has a very deep meaning democracy as i said democratization is a very important concept of democracy when you talk about public administration the terms appear bit overwhelming but once you understand them it is very simple what matters is what exactly are the questions that are getting asked and am i prepared for it when i go through the notes when i have done my preparation and that is where i can promise you it's not going to be an issue right so that is the second part that is technical language it is only to do with understanding the meaning once you get the meaning right everything will become easy right hello third aspect is with respect to comparison between public administration and psir dekho both of them are very good options we have uh, rahul puri sir who's taking public that is psir one of the best right i would encourage you that abhi aapne dekha you are able to get the insights into public administration you should also be attending the session of rahul puri sir he will give you a lot of insight with respect to psir one of the broad differences between psir and public administration is as i said political science is the study of state and here it is study of executive you have to study about international relations over here here you don't have to study about international relations but then there are administrative theories you need to study about there are personal administration as i said promotion transfer etc you need to study about so there are some commonalities there are some differences right but then for you to make an informed choice you should be attending that session are you able to understand okay with any other doubt that you are having with respect this the so let me assure updation when you talk about public administration means updated with respect to current events not so much with respect to current affairs only right so the first part is to get the theory right for example what is 360 degree uh, from what that is review system what was mp polish theory what is communication different tools and second part is to understand the current events for example uh, federal issues mein gst ka kya role hai so that's a federalism is a topic which is relevant since creation of usa but GST is a new concept mainly with respect to India. As far as current events are concerned, ninety-nine percent of it will get covered in the class itself. What will happen is there will be at least one question that might be from current affairs. In the bath, understand? That may not get covered mainly because it could be by that time that is the topic which has become the hot topic. As I have said, whatever we are doing right now essentially will be helping you in the next attempt. It is not key. नहीं करेगा वो मान के चलिए 2024 के लिए अपेयर कर रहे हैं एंड इट इज बेस्ड ऑन ट्रेंड एनालिसिस अच्छा सेकंड थिंग इज कि सर यहां तक तो हो गया बट लेट्स से बाय दिसंबर आवर दैट इज नवंबर दिसंबर आवर सिलेबस इज कंप्लीटेड देन इफ इट ऑल इंपॉर्टेंट अपडेट्स आर हैपनिंग देन व्हाट देन आई कीप ऑन अपडेटिंग यू आई विल कीप ऑन सेंडिंग यू मटेरियल यू कैन ऑलवेज टॉक टू मी ओवर फोन इफ लेट्स से देयर समथिंग इंपॉर्टेंट योजना मैगजीन वंस 
in every year or twice in every year there are these articles which are directly important for public administration that are coming in yojana so my students who are like let's say preparing since last three years i keep on sending them also so wo updates mein baad mein bhi deta raunga let's say this one topic that you're not able to understand you want to again attend those classes for those topics you come and talk to me i'll arrange it for you me baat samajh lo the idea is it's not that that as your december is the end of public administration it is just that your core completion of the syllabus is done and anything and everything that is required for the exam will get covered even after that right and again there is a promise that i am making that all the questions except for one at the most it could be 100% questions but at the most one question will not be from the notes because in my notes itself i am integrating it with the current events current information government policies etc etc right any other doubt any do anyone else right online students any doubt एक एक करके करते चलो सारे हर्ष स्टार्टिंग से देखते हैं सो ग्रेट 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 नाइस माली ओके हर्ष फी स्ट्रक्चर सो फेबरली यू कैन एक्चुअली कॉन्टैक्ट द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन दे हेल्प यू आउट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू अंडरस्टैंडिंग दी फी स्ट्रक्चर बोल ऑनलाइन एंड ऑफलाइन इन डिटेल फाइन any concerns doubts with respect to public administration or let's say upsc uh, preparation yes anindam please ask me your doubt yes anindam uh, you said in the first part of the class yes that public administration is all about studying all how the executive works or process and all but i guess uh, this is just my Okay. For us, what we have taught us in it's quite integrated that even uh, review of uh, a government director as a judiciary yes is also an integral part of public administration because that is the philosophy and that is the how we live the thing. True. So. so fine so the whole in the beginning i had explained that there are different schools of thought with respect to what is public administration right so there is one school of thought that essentially believes the fact that you need to understand all three organs then only you can understand public administration but then if you essentially are getting into understanding all three organs how exactly it is disciplined study of public administration we but so for example engineering is So your first year will essentially be about understanding all streams of engineering, electrical, mechanical. But from second year, you become very specific with respect to the stream of engineering that you have taken. In this respect, what exactly the critics of this opinion says that no, it is about understanding executive, and from that light, you need to understand some aspects of judiciary, some aspects of this. That is, uh, what you say, uh, legislature. For example, judicial activism. that's a term that is mainly used with respect to understanding role of judiciary as a way in which it interferes with the functioning of executive so that is the scope till which you need to understand about judiciary in context of understanding executive but what we are not going to do is to get into how exactly judiciary functions that is beyond the scope of public administration are you able to understand what are different ver- versions of judicial review what what exactly is the idea of having a jury should it be that people should be given jury so these are questions that get gets into the realm of law how exactly judicial review should be defined different perspectives of judicial review these are things that we do not study in public administration but of course impact of judicial judicial orders something like article 142 something like article 143 on the functioning of executive that we need to study judicial activism judicial overreach that we need to study and that is why it is said that public administration by and large is advanced polity you understand deeper aspects of polity is it clear in the fine any other doubt uh, yes yes yes, yes. 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 Yes, yes, yes. So we have a system with respect to access to recording 
आई थिंक थर्टी डेज का या फिफ्टीन डेज का होता है जिस आस्क फ्रॉम दी दी मैनेजमेंट दिल हेल्प यू विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दी करेंट स्टेटस बट येस वी गिव यू सफिशियंट टाइम विद रिस्पेक्ट टू कवरेज ऑफ दी 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 रिकॉर्डेड लेक्चर्स दे आर स्टूडेंट्स यू एसेंशली वॉच इट एट दी नाइट इन रात में दे वॉच इट एंड नेक्स्ट डे दे आस्क मी ऑल द क्वेश्चन आर दे आर हैविंग all then all we decided time when they essentially can ask the questions i also have some students who watch all the lectures of the week in saturday sunday like weekends we sare ek sire se sare dekh liye and then they keep on revising it so of course it is challenging to do a job and at the same time to pay for upsc but then we have to figure out solutions for it what we can provide you excesses with respect to online classes and i can give you my word that whenever you are having doubt you essentially can ask it even when you are watching recorded lectures हाँ अब ये है कि लेट्स यू आर वॉचिंग अ लेक्चर विच इज थर्टी डेज बैक एंड देन यू आर डायरेक्टली जम्पिंग टू अ लेक्चर दैट यू हैव दैट इज हैपनिंग राइट नाउ और बीच के लेक्चर्स नहीं देखे सो इट विल बी वेरी टफ फॉर मी टू ब्रिज दैट गैप सो एज लॉन्ग एज यू आर वॉच वॉचिंग लेक्चर्स इन क्रोनोलॉजी एंड एज एंड वेन यू आर हैविंग डाउट एट दैट पॉइंट आई कीप ऑन क्लियरिंग इट इवन इफ यू आर वॉचिंग रिकॉर्डेड राइट I think there is another doubt. Uh, sir, Harsh is how much revision? What exactly? It provides secretariat swimming. How much effort will we have to put revision? So Harsh, revision is something that is the way in which any tough thing will need to be cleared, right? So. When you talk about sports, it becomes practice. जितना प्रैक्टिस करते हो उतना अच्छा होता है वेन यू टॉक अबाउट अकेडमिक्स दिस इज वेर वी यूज टू अवर रिविजन विच इसेंशली इज प्रैक्टिस ओनली यू नीड टू कीप ऑन स्टडिंग इट सो दर इज नो अपर लिमिट टू हाउ मेनी रिविजन दैट नीड्स टू हैपन बट द फर्स्ट कंपोनेंट ऑफ डूइंग एनी थिंग इन अकेडमिक्स इज टू गेट दी कंसेप्ट राइट ऑल दी बेसिक्स राइट एंड हैविंग ऑल दी रिलेवेंट कॉन्टेंट एट वन प्लेस एंड दिस इज वेर आई कम इन वट आई प्रोमिस यू इज ऑल दी नोट्स ऑल दी टॉपिक्स विल गेट कवर्ड इट विल बी कवर्ड इन अ वे इन विच आर एबल टू मेक प्रॉपर नोट्स आउट ऑफ इट यू आर एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड ऑल दी कंसेप्ट एंड वट आई कैन प्रोमिस यू इज यू विल अंडरस्टैंड दी नरेटिव पार्ट ऑफ इट सो दैट यू डोंट फॉरगेट लाइक जैसे मूवीज देखते हैं तो अब मिडीवल हिस्ट्री बोरिंग लग सकती है बट बाहुबली बोरिंग नहीं लग सकता वाई फॉर द रीजन इट दे मेक इट इन अ वे इन विच इट बिकम्स ईजी फॉर अस टू अंडरस्टैंड आर यू विल टू अंडरस्टैंड पॉइंट so this is my attempt that is this is what i try to do to make sure that you got the logical part of it the 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 narrative aspect of it the way in which i covered that is i explained you the syllabus the way in which i explained you what is the meaning of public administration in the same manner we'll cover it right so the tough part is actually what you need to do is to be committed to watch the class every day make notes out of it revise your notes and keep on asking your doubts to me my part of the commitment is that i'm going to leave no stone unturned okay bye then okay how many marks are considered good marks out of 500 in this subject dekho ab ye bada waisa sawal hai that is what exactly is the right marks the right marks is that if you are able to clear the exam that is the right marks right for example abhi cricket ka as i said that if i have scored 400 is it good enough if you are batting second it is It is a small total if you are able to score four hundred one. If I score one fifty, and you end up scoring one forty eight, so one fifty was enough. Idea is that in UPSC, what matters is that you are in a competitive exam in which you need to be ahead of the others. So what exactly will be relevant? What will be relevant is when you look at people who are clearing the exam, are they clearing it with public administration? So you'll actually see a very substantial number of people based on number of people with public administration appearing the exam. They are clearing the exam with public administration as an optional. There are years where two ninety is a very good score. There are years when there are people who have got three hundred ten, three fifteen, three twenty in public administration. What matters is in that year what was the average score of all the optionals and where exactly public administration stood. In this respect, what exactly you see, all papers by and large are very competitive. I hope you will understand the point I am trying to say. That I I'll give you very similar. Bebop Jindal rank two fifty two thousand twenty. Two two thousand twenty two thousand twenty attempt web of Jindal yes. Ah, uh, he posted in this is my student right. He got ah two forty eight in commerce right. Two forty eight seems to be a low score, but two forty eight was the second highest score in commerce in that year, and two forty nine was the highest score. 
in this respect this nothing that he did in new in that paper there was nothing that he did new in anything to be very honest it's just the fact that he got bit less marks in commerce and that is why he was able to clear the point i'm trying to say is the fact that all the people who essentially are getting reasonably good marks are among the top 10 20 30 people in that hospital are writing almost equally good bahut zyada antar nahi hota unke answers mein thoda sa form wagera examples mein ho jata hai right what matters is are you able to clear the exam and in that i'm trying to say that first public administration has been scoring very well that's one part and number 2 it is going to help you enormously in gs and that again adds on to the score that you're going to get right So I, Abhi Priyanka, rank thirty one, got two ninety five something, which is a great score, right? Last year I had a student who essentially got three hundred ten, but उसका मतलब final list में नाम नहीं आया, right? So इसमें आप बहुत अलग करना नहीं, हाँ, anywhere more than two eighty is going to be a good score, subject to you essentially have done well in other option that is uh, GS or topics as well, right? Hush is again asking, sir, you said your notes are very are going to be very exhaustive while syllabus is said to be concise which is one of the point of reason to go for this option won't it contradict are bhai can syllabus is concise but that does not mean they shortcut to cover the syllabus dekho let's say the syllabus is very big and i'm covering it in 75 lectures then it becomes an issue the idea is if you have to cover each and every topic for the optional of public administration we need to devote time and i'm prepared to devote that time so that no stone is unturned I hope you are able to understand the point. Syllabus is short mainly when you compare it with, that is when you try to understand the length of the syllabus or topics and everything that you need to cover. The reason I'm taking time is so that I'm able to cover all the topics. I'm not going to say that no, yeah, this is too easy. It's simple polity. You can study it by yourself, and that is why it's going to take a bit more time. So the people who might be covering in seventy, seventy-five lectures, eighty lectures, are not doing justice to the coverage. and that will become very evident when you compare the notes that i'm providing the way in which i'm teaching and with the people who essentially covering in 80 lectures 70 lectures right as i said my accountability towards you is that i make sure that you get very high marks if you have watched all my lectures and if you have uh, that has made proper notes and done revision of it that you can see direct nexus between what we covered in the class and what gets asked in the exam theek hai harsh then Sir, how many effective hours are required to study optional for the working employee to complete the syllabus within a reasonable period? So Sri Lanka is asking, sir, am I a working employee? How many hours are required to study public administration? Look, for anything that you are going to study for which you don't have a background, it starts with getting the foundation right. It starts with getting the concepts right, and that is where I come in. I am going to explain it in the class. I am going to provide you notes. All you need to do is to attend all classes. attend the recordings if you are missing the class make proper notes and before the next class try to revise it that's the extent to what you need to do till the time the classes are going on periodically when are having whenever we are having class test or this test then again of course you need to put in bit more effort to revise it again what we have covered but only thing that you need to do till the classes is going on is to have command over notes agar wo kar liya that is 95% of upsc uh, of public administration preparation right अब इसमें हो क्या जाएगा क्लास विल बी अराउंड टू आवर्स टू आवर फिफ्टीन मिनट्स आई वुड इमेजिन इट विल टेक व्हाट फोर्टी फाइव मिनट्स फॉर यू और वन आवर फॉर यू टू रिवाइज ऑल द नोट्स दैट यू नीड टू डू सो अटेंड ऑल द क्लासेस दैट इज डू रिवीजन मेक प्रॉपर नोट्स एंड डू रिवीजन ऑफ द क्लास नोट्स दैट शुड बी अ गो टू स्ट्रेटेजी फॉर नेक्स्ट फाइव एंड हाफ मंथ्स टिल द टाइम वी आर कवरिंग दी सिलेबस वंस दैट इज डन अगेन टॉक टू मी आई हेल्प यू आउट हाउ टू डू द रिविजन बिकॉज वंस यू गेट योर कंसेप्ट राइट रिविजन इज गोइंग टू बी वेरी क्विक revision is going to be that within let's say within a month you are able to complete the revision of public administration in your second time right one of the things i say in polity generally is ki wo ek baar concept theek ho jaye na then you do revisions it get to a point before the exam within 3 4 days you are able to complete your lakshmikant abhi jo overwhelming lagti hai wo book it is so logically that is polity flows in such a logical manner that within 2 days 3 days you can complete the book i can complete abhi lagega ki sir आप तो कर लोगे बट ऐसा है नहीं बिकॉज यू हैव स्टडीड इट फॉर मेनी टाइम्स आइडियाज आई कैन कंप्लीट दैट पॉलिटी बुक विद इन वन डे वेरी इजीली बिकॉज इट्स सो लॉजिकली रिटर्न द सेम विल हैपन विद पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन द फर्स्ट लेयर इज गोइंग टू टेक सम टाइम देन द सेकंड रिवीजन विल टेक लेस टाइम एंड इट्स गोइंग टू ओनली बिकम ईजियर ठीक है फाइन श्री लेखा 
हेलो लतिका विल यू प्रोवाइड अ कंपाइल्ड नोट्स पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन पी डी एफ और हार्ड कॉपी लुक द वे इन विच आई गो अबाउट इट वोट पोशन सलीम सो द वे इन द क्वेश्चन दैट सलीम एड आस्ट कि सर हाउ एग्जैक्टली डू वी की पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन रिलेवेंट टू द ईयर इन विच वी आर गोइंग टू अपेयर इन द एग्जाम राइट इन दिस रिस्पेक्ट वट आई बिलीव इन दैट माई नोट शुड बी रिलेवेंट एंड दैट इज वाई एवरी ईयर माई नोट्स कीप ऑन गेटिंग अपडेटेड the crux that is core part 95% of it is going to be the class notes and at the same time for some topics like financial management with respect to types of budgeting with respect to some type uh, that is topics where your handouts will be more than enough i am going to provide you handouts while discussing it before in the class so class mein proper discussion hoga how what everything that is written in the handout and then i am going to provide it but that is going to be for 5 to 6% the core that is material that you need to follow are the notes that you have made that is how we are going to do it is it clear kritika any other doubt anyone have to hear kritika anyone having any doubt ha bhai what's your name sashwat sashwat थिंकर्सोलॉजिकलीरी Let's say other officials which have thousands years of history, right? But ha, Indian administrators, me as I said, there is only one thinker, and the that is well, the overall uh, view of British and uh, uh, that is Mughal administration that we need to do, right? People one may think as in I think ten, twelve thinkers will be there, not more than that, okay? But then logically it is written, so it essentially will become a quite very interesting reason. Now that you need to, you are forming a subject called public administration. So the question that they are having is, if we look thinkers like us, because hey, I need the thinkers. So what they have done is to take some of the managerial thinkers, some of the thinkers like Max Weber, who is actually more of a political thinker, uh, that is a sociologist. But then we essentially took some a <laughs> bad part of it, and we are calling it to be our idea, uh, Max Weber, right? So that's the thing. You don't actually have very few thinkers. But because you need to justify to be a field of academics, is why we have included some of the thinkers of other field. That we, thode thinkers, zada yada, but it's very little amount. Yes, me. Right? Ah, with Babat, it has to be done because. Now, just like Cortelia, for example, simple. Dekho. Now, what he did was to provide a theory of state by and large. Right? Usme ek altishast is a book that he created in which. There are number of chapter that deals with how recruitment of of public servant should happen. What exactly is the way in which king should function? King is uh, that is executive, permanent executive, sorry, political executive, right? How exactly grievance should be addressed? How exactly taxation should happen? How exactly internal security should happen? So what we did, we create we kept a filter on Alta Shastra, and we took out things which are relevant to executive. And now we say Cortellian uh, aspects of. Administration, but he never actually tried to do that. What he did was to create a theory of state. The same we have done with Max Weber. Max Weber has written extensively about so many things, but we have filtered it and we essentially brought only the executive part of it. Are you able to understand? So that is what we have done to some of the thinkers. Just a one or Herbert Simon, for example. Herbert Simon is one of the thinkers we need to study. Uno ne uh, the theory that he gave with respect to decision making essentially became the reason why he got Nobel Prize. अब उस डिसीजन मेकिंग को व्हेन वी टेलर डेट इन कंटेक्स्ट टू पब्लिक एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन तो हमने उनको एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव थिंकर बोल दिया आर यू बिलीव इन मैनेजमेंट में इसको पढ़ा जाता है अब मिलिट्री स्ट्रेटजीज में हर्बर्ट साइमन को पढ़ा जाता है बट देन दे टेलर इट टू देयर एडवांटेज सो दैट इज व्हाट वी गॉट सम ऑफ द थिंकर्स ठीक है एनी अदर डाउट एनीवन ठीक है ऑनलाइन स्टूडेंट्स चलो सो देयर आर सम डाउट्स ओवर YouTube hmm theek okay. hai so piku talks is asking i am currently working therefore will be joining the weekend batch but for optional it has to be weekdays 
तो विल इट बी इजी टू स्टडी दिस ऑब्जेक्ट एज एन एज द ऑप्शनल देखो इट इज गोइंग टू बी इजी इन द सेंस इट्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग इट्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग इट्स वेरी गुड बट देन एक चीज है अब मेरी बात थोड़ी हार्श लगेगी बट दिस इज समथिंग दैट वी नीड टू एक्सेप्ट एवरी वन ऑफ अस इज हैविंग अ स्ट्रगल स्टोरी राइट किसी का थोड़ा ज्यादा स्ट्रगल है किसी का थोड़ा कम स्ट्रगल है बट दिस स्ट्रगल स्टोरी बिकम्स एन इंस्पिरेशन वेन यू गेट सक्सेस बट देन सक्सेस and what it takes to be successful is exactly the same for everyone for example many of you might be working professional some of you are preparing full time there are girls there are people who are coming from poor background there are people who might be physically handicapped or what exactly we see those 100 questions are not going to change for them upsc to wo 100 questions there hai everyone will need to clear the cut off based on of course their category but that cut off is not going to change your mains exam ke questions are not going to change by and large the interview procedure is not going to change that means every one of us who are living our own part of struggle will need to find solutions by which we are able to bring our dreams to reality mahendra singh dhoni ki agar movie dekhi hai think about it he was not selected for under 17 he was not selected for under 19 he was not selected for under 21 he was not selected for under 23 but then he got selected due the trophy that means at all these points he was being told that you are not good enough किसी तरह वो अपना कॉमर्स की ग्रेजुएशन मैनेज कर रहा है किसी तरह अपनी जॉब को मैनेज कर रहा है किसी तरह बट दिस इज समथिंग विच हैज बिकम एन इंस्पिरेशन बिकॉज यू गॉट सक्सेस अगर मैं बताऊं कि मेरा एक दोस्त है लेट से राहुल उसने ऐसे 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 किया है ये किया है दैट वोट मोटिवेट यू बाई बिकॉज यू कैन सी सक्सेस विद इन स्ट्रगल बिकम्स अ स्टोरी एंड इंस्पिरेशन वेन यू गेट सक्सेस एंड सक्सेस के लिए वॉट इट टेक्स इज सेम फॉर एवरी वन राइट and we need to figure out ways in which we are able to do that struggle we are able to come good on what it takes to clear it ye baat samajh lo virat kohli lost his father at a very young age arjun tendulkar had anything and everything by which a person can become great that is best cricketer right in this respect what is what do we see virat kohli is next to sachin now and arjun tendulkar is figuring out how exactly he can bowl more than 125 km per hour what is the idea idea is that struggle was lot more for virat kohli but he got success and that is why it's inspiring right so that's the thing that we will need to figure out ways in which we are able to find solution and that is going to be a part of our success story up now coming to public administration while dealing with it many of my students who are working professional they generally tend to watch it either in night or they get up early in the morning main prescribe karta hu subah bahut jaldi utho साढ़े तीन बजे उठो चार बजे गेट अप एट थ्री थर्टी इन द मॉर्निंग गेट अप एट फोर इन द मॉर्निंग एंड फर्स्ट बी डन विथ योर यू पी एस सी आर्स दैट यू नीड टू गिव इन टू यू पी एस सी राइट वन शोर डन विथ इट वॉच योर लेक्चर्स रिगार्डिंग एवरीथिंग मेक योर नोट्स इन एवरीथिंग देन गेट ऑन विथ योर जॉब एंड कम बैक डू थिंग्स दैट यू नो कीप यू हैप्पी एंड देन स्लीप यू हैव टू स्लीप राइट यू नीड टू ईट राइट एंड यू नीड टू गिव अ गुड पार्ट ऑफ योर डे टू यू पी एस सी प्रपरेशन बिकॉज नाउ यू ओ इट टू दैम दैट इज हाउ नीड टू प्रोसीड इट there are some students as i said they essentially are watching all the five lectures over the weekdays that is again some strategy that people are doing you need to figure out your own balance but as i said whatever is the struggle that you are living things will not get become easier because no one actually knows in upsc what's the struggle that you need to live i hope to an extent it's able to help you that is uh, my answer uh, gives you answer that is to the question you had दीपक के सास्किंग सर ऑनलाइन ऐप डाउनलोड नहीं हो रहा प्ले स्टोर की क्लास कैसे करेंगे क्लास कैसे करें ई लर्न का हमारा प्लेटफॉर्म है इट्स अ वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग प्लेटफॉर्म सो मैनेजमेंट विल हेल्प यू विद रिस्पेक्ट टू अंडरस्टैंडिंग हाउ इट वर्क्स वट एवर द क्वेरीज दैट यू आर हैविंग बट एनी वेज आई वुड रिकमेंड यू टू गो एंड रजिस्टर योर सेल्फ ऑन ई लर्न आप अभी जाओ मेक अ प्रोफाइन ई लर्न इवन इफ यू चूज नॉट टू टेक अ बैड और एनी पेड कोर्स ई लर्न इन इट सेल्फ इज अ प्लेटफॉर्म इट्स अ वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग प्लेटफॉर्म and what we do is we keep on giving open uh, resources to students be it with respect to current affairs be it with respect to that is important current affairs ka discussion discussions with the other teachers and all so elan pe ab register ho jao you'll understand everything or bhi koi doubt hai our technical team will assist you bhai theek okay? hai then sir class mein running notes banane padenge ya fir aap doge class mein running notes banane padenge but i'm going to dictate it Since I'm going to dictate it, you will have ample time to write it. Okay? Yes. So Dheeraj is asking how to comprehend the question 
which are asked in public administration you need to understand you have to lead understand the topics in public administration then automatically you'll start comprehending it are able to understand for example if you don't know what is federalism and the question is how indian federalism is different from american federalism then you'll not understand uh, what is the question about so as and when you essentially understanding the topics of uh, public administration automatically you'll start comprehending the questions in the classes itself whenever we are completing jo keystone milestones hote hai na jab we essentially we have covered two units one unit we are going to cover the previous year questions so that mein ho kya jata hai generally questions wants you to understand two topics and that is how you need to understand one question question mein do topics linked hote hai so a lot of time what happens is that if you have covered just one unit it could be the question asked from that unit requires you to have understanding of public policy which is unit number 8 तो थोड़ा सा वहाँ हो जाता है बट वन यू गेट ए कम्प्लीट अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ अवैड एवरी थिंग इट्स माई जॉब टू मेक इट ईजी फॉर यू टू मेक यू कॉम्प्रीहेंड ठीक है बट इट स्टार्ट विद गेटिंग दी फाउंडेशन राइट ठीक है धीरज रिया इज आस्किंग आई एम स्टार्टिंग आई हैव स्टार्टेड टू लीड एंड मेकिंग नोट्स ऑफ एन सी आर टी बट आई एम लिटिल कन्फ्यूज अबाउट ओल एन सी आर टी एंड न्यू एन सी आर टीज देखो ज्ञान ऐसी चीज़ है कहीं से मिल जाता है राइट If you read old NCERTs, it will help you in UPSC preparation. If you read new NCERTs, it will help you in UPSC preparation. While it is not connected with public administration, as as a general point, I am saying this that new NCERTs now are becoming relevant in prelims. So actually, see there are questions that are getting asked from new NCERTs more than the old NCERTs. At time, the old NCERTs were there, but these days uh, you see that there are questions that are getting asked from new NCERTs. For example, I take polity. नाइन्थ की पॉलिटी से इलेवेंथ की पॉलिटी कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन नेटवर्क से यू गेटिंग क्वेश्चन गेटिंग डायरेक्टली आस फ्रॉम दियर सेल्फ राइट यहाँ पे होता है ना कि वॉट दे कुड भी मल्टीपल राइट आंसर्स इनवेरेबली यू पी एस सी एग्रीज विद वट इज रिटर्न इन दी एन सी आर टी बात समझ दो तो माई सजेशन इज वट एवर एन सी आर टी एबल टू गेट होल्ड ऑफ पढ़ो इट इज गोइंग टू हेल्प यू आउट इन रिसेंट ईयर्स न्यू एन सी आर टी एज बिकम मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट फाइन चलो Uh, Lushi Kesh is asking, so what will be your teaching methodology by slides or dictation? So Lushi Kesh, for ninety five percent, it's going to be that is I'm going to explain things over the board and I'm going to dictate the notes that need to be written. I always encourage when I'm explaining something and you believe that while I may not have given you dictation on it, you would want to write it because I use all sorts of examples in order to say it so that you understand the concept. So if at all you're writing those as well, बहुत बढ़िया बात है. But ha, ninety-five percent of it is going to be the handwritten notes that you're going to make based on the dictations I'll be giving you, explanations I'll be giving you, and around for five percent it will be through the slides, and I'm going to give those slides in form of PDF so that you're able to understand that as well. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. So Priya is asking, I'm starting and reading notes of NCERT. I'm reading. Oh, she, ho gaya Priya. do i have to read new ncert as well i would encourage you to read new ncert when i look at the pattern of that is the recent prelims exam mainly questions have been from new ncert then we agreed sure we are saying thank you any other doubt anyone right online students youtube students students over that is e learn right now any other doubt theek okay. hai so my email address is or oh, sorry my number is so this is my phone number if at all you are having any doubt you can ping me over whatsapp you can text me right i would request you to ping me over whatsapp first so that we are able to appoint apart from it my email id there is this official email id you can get it from the management apart from it my personal email id is very simple ias with anubhav at gmail dot com आई ए एस विथ अनुभव एट जी मेल डॉट कॉम अलंकार पड़े हैं हिंदी से इसमें अलंकार है आई ए एस विथ अनुभव ऑल्सो मीन्स एक्सपीरियंस आई एस विथ एक्सपीरियंस आई ए एस विथ अनुभव एट जी मेल डॉट कॉम राइट सो इफ एट ऑल यू आर हैविंग एनी डाउट्स कंसर्न एनी थिंग दैट यू वुड वॉन्ट टू आस मी डायरेक्टली यू कैन पिंग मी ओवर व्हाट्सएप और यू कैन ऑल्सो ई मेल इट टू मी यू विल गेट दी ऑफिशियल ई मेल आई डी फ्रॉम दी दिस एंड दिस इज एस एस एट माई पर्सनल ई मेल आई डी I'm going to respond. Okay, hello. Absolute, my it was absolutely my pleasure to have you here. So, if there is any doubt, ask me. Ask me. Okay, online students, take care, everyone. Take care.
फी एंड एवरीथिंग प्रिया मैनेजमेंट विल अपडेट यू आप एक बार कॉन्टैक्ट कर लो दे अपडेट यू विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द फी एंड प्लीज टक्ट ठीक है प्रिया ऑल द बेस्ट एवरी